tissues and toilet rolls also contain a high proportion of waste paper, between 60 and 70 percent. Composite cartons which are collected in yellow bags and bins also supply raw material for the production of paper. Sauce, juice and milk cartons contain about 80% cellulose, which consists of particularly long and consequently high-grade paper fibres. These composite packs are manufactured from different materials that are firmly bonded together. In addition to cellulose and polyethylene, they frequently contain aluminium. In the water in the drum pulper, the shredded cartons swell and the plastic and aluminium separate from the cardboard. The paper fraction is removed and processed as premium quality waste paper. The remaining pieces of plastic and aluminium are subsequently used in cement production plants. Today, it's no longer necessary to sort composite cartons by hand. By means of the reflected infrared light spectrum, this detection unit can identify composite cartons. A computer-controlled blowout unit at the end of the conveyor belt intercepts the beverage carton and, with a blast of air, transfers it to the corresponding container. Recycling technology has made great progress in the last few years in Germany. This is most noticeable in the plastic sector. Up to the beginning of the 90s, plastic packaging was either incinerated or landfill. There was neither the technology nor the infrastructure to recycle used plastic sales packaging in a sound manner. In the meantime, however, more than half a million tonnes of used plastic packaging are recycled each year, more than two-thirds of the total quantity produced. The extent to which this conserves resources is documented by the Resources Balance, which was compiled for the first time by the dual system in 2001. Properly separated is half recycled. This principle applies to plastics in particular. The plastics are sorted, increasingly using automatic techniques, into the fractions bottles, films, PET, expanded polystyrene and so-called mixed plastics, generally smaller pieces of film, cups, tubs and plastic lids. Mechanical recycling converts plastic packaging waste into new products. Expanded polystyrene is ground and, for instance, shaped into new polystyrene articles. Old plastic films are melted and blown into new films in extruders. Or, like most plastic bottles, they're processed into high-grade re-granulate. Re-granulates, which are produced in various qualities, can be used to manufacture drainage pipes or pallets. Sewage pipes and plant pallets are also made from plastic packaging waste. In fact, Regranulates are even used to produce children's toys. For instance, the wheels of this front end loader. Plastics can be recycled most efficiently if they're separated homogeneously. This is why optical sorting systems are being used more and more frequently. They can identify which kind of plastic the packaging is manufactured from and sort it appropriately. Several of these near-infrared separators, connected in series, are capable of separating polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene and PET from each other, accurately and reliably. These sorted fractions can then be used to produce secondary raw materials with a quality comparable to that of virgin plastics. Example, PET. This plastic, which is on the advance for beverage packaging, can be recycled as often as desired as long as it's properly sorted and prepared. In the separating drum, the bottles are cleaned and the metal parts removed with a magnet. Then the bottles are ground. A blower removes most of the label fragments. The polyolefins, from which the bottle tops are manufactured, are separated out using the sink-float process. 
Then the PET chips, wet with soda lye, are heated in this rotary kiln. In this way, any remaining impurities and dirt are removed completely. Dried and cleaned, the PET chips are transferred to the ground stock sorting unit, where each grain that doesn't correspond to the defined colour is detected by a colour scanning camera and blown out in a fraction of a second. Product is a secondary raw material that's even suitable for clear drink bottles. However, many sorting plants are still producing considerable quantities of mixed plastics. This material can also be recycled. For instance, it can be used to produce window frames, profiles for railway track edging, or particularly long-life reusable plastic pallets. Mixed plastics are prepared prior to recycling. This means that they're shredded, automatically sorted, and caked into small pellets in pelletizers. This produces a homogeneous product with clearly defined properties. Suitable for pouring and metering, it can also be feedstock recycled in industrial scale plants. Feedstock recycling also employs different processes. What they all have in common is that they utilize the chemical properties of the plastic. In this plant, synthesis gas is first recovered from mixed plastics and then used to produce methanol. Mixed plastics can also be of great service in the production of pig iron. Injected into the blast furnace, the agglomerate reacts with the iron ore, removing the oxygen from it. Pig iron forms and can be run off. In this process, plastic replaces heavy oil on a one-to-one -one ratio, thus helping to conserve valuable resources. New recycling processes are continuously being developed and tested, and existing ones improved. This applies not only to recycling. Innovative, promising approaches are also being pursued in the sorting sector. In Hanover Anderton, the future has already begun. The world's first fully automatic sorting plant is located here. By means of the techniques employed here, the cost of sorting and preparing plastic packaging can be cut by up to 50%. In the first step, dry mechanical processing, classical sorting techniques are used. A sieve drum separates the waste stream according to size. Air separators blow out films. Belt magnets lift cans off the belt. Near-infrared systems sort out composite packaging and PET bottles. In the second step, wet mechanical preparation, paper fractions are detached and removed in large washing drums. The rest, almost exclusively plastics and aluminium, is shredded. Aluminium is removed from the material stream by an eddy current separator. and the different plastics are separated from each other using a system of centrifuges. After drying, polystyrene and polyethylene are melted directly into re-granulates. Future-oriented technology has clearly reduced the mountain of waste in Germany and also made recycling much cheaper. Packaging recycling works and it's getting better all the time. This has been proved by the dual system and its partners. The next step is to apply the principle of closing the loop in other branches of industry. In April 1998, legal regulations came into force for the recycling of used cars and all types of old batteries and corresponding guidelines now exist for recycling discarded computers. Today, at the end of its useful life, a product is less and less likely to be landfilled or incinerated, but rather as a secondary raw material used to manufacture products with a future. The principle of closing the loop and conserving resources is opening up new development perspectives, not only in Germany, but all over the world. <laughs> <laughs>